Cap toe boots are a versatile and stylish addition to any man's wardrobe. They can be dressed up for more formal occasions or can give a more rugged appearance to a casual outfit. Either way, they're a great choice. Today, we're gonna compare three great options in the two to $300 range. Now, all three of these boots are full grain leather. They all have rubber or partial rubber soles. And they're all relatively new companies with the oldest being around since 2009. If you're considering a new pair of cap toes, then hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a clearer picture of what you want and what you're willing to pay. Hey, before we get started though, if you're new here, I'm Lee and I review products from lifestyle brands to help you make a more informed decision when you go to spend your hard earned dollar. If that sounds like something for you, then I want to invite you to tap that subscribe button so you won't miss another video. All right, let's start off with a brand that's been around for about nine years, but you don't hear much about them around the, the YouTubes. It's the San Francisco based Warfield and Grand and their Woodlands boot, which sells for $225. The Woodlands boot is a dark brown pull up leather with a suede tongue and two speed hooks on each side. The inside of the tongue and the top of the opening of the boot are both calf leather lined, while the upper of the boot is lined with Italian wool. The footbed on this boot is a padded EVA insole and it has a cool camouflage pattern on it. I don't, you can probably can't see it. <laughs> you have to take my word for it. And the midsole is a Texan fiberboard. The sole is a leather sole with a rubber forefoot and a rubber heel for traction when uh, conditions get slippery. Warfield and Grand sources their materials like their leather from America and their wool from Italy. And these boots are made in China. They are Blake stitched and uh, that makes them resolable if needed. Of the three boots in this comparison, I actually found the Woodlands to be the most comfortable right out of the box. The slightly wider toe box and the soft wool lining meant that I didn't have to break them in to be able to wear them for long periods of time. These boots also run true to size, which made it really easy to find my fit. Now these are easily the warmest boots of this comparison, I'm sure because of the wool lining, and it makes them a really great choice for late fall and winter wear, especially for those living in cooler climates. I would consider the Woodlands boot to have the dressiest appearance of the three. The um, deep brown waxy leather and the detail around the toe cap and the heel, see if you could see the heel there, give them a certain elegance that the other two boots don't have. That doesn't necessarily mean that I can't go casual with them, I just wouldn't go as casual with them as I would go with the other two today. All in all, I think the Woodlands boot is a really great choice for anyone who wants an immediately comfortable, exceptionally classy, expertly crafted boot that they can wear on the daily during cooler months of the year. All right, next on our list is the Austin based Helm, which if you go back to my earlier videos, I did review their Chelsea Helm has been around since 2009, and we're looking at the Hollis boot here. At $295, it's the most expensive boot in the comparison, but Helm does offer 15% off to new customers, and they do occasionally run sales. Now, the boot I'm holding is a full grain, olive colored leather, and I have to say that I really like this color. It's the thickest leather of the bunch, and like Warfield and Grand, it has a decent pull up to it. The Hollis is fully leather lined and it has ample padding in the footbed. There are no speed hooks on these boots, but that really doesn't make them any more difficult to pull on or off. In fact, one of the things I really like about the Hollis is that there's a reinforced leather pull tab on the back to make them easier to pull on. These boots have a rubber midsole and it gives them that signature white line that really all of the helm boots have and you can identify them by the white line. The sole is a lot like the Warfield and Grand, they're leather 
with a rubber forefoot and heel. The difference being is that the Hollis has a mini lug for better traction. Helm sources their materials from Brazil, and that's also where they make their boots. They are Blake rapid stitched, which sits somewhere in the middle between the Blake stitch and uh, a Goodyear welt construction. Even though the Hollis has um, a great padded footbed, which I really appreciate, I would say that of the three boots that I'm comparing today, they're the least comfortable straight out of the box. Now that doesn't mean that they're uncomfortable though. It's uh, that this almond shaped toe is narrower than the others. And so it takes a little bit of breaking in before they can compare. Helm also has a fit predictor on their website. So you can order the size that's right for you without a whole lot of guesswork. Of the three boots today, I would say that the Helm, uh, it seems to be the most rugged between the thicker leather, the lug soles, the rubber midsoles, they'll probably hold up for a very long time. The Hollis boot also has a pretty versatile appearance. They're not as dressy as the Woodlands. They go good with just about any casual outfit and this olive color, they'll match with almost any colored pants, any outfit. The Helm Hollis is a rugged, go with anything, daily driver that can handle anything between cleaning the garage and going to the office. And it's for people who want um, that sort of versatility and they're willing to pay a few extra bucks for it. Okay, wrapping up this comparison is the, should I say it, internet darling <laughs> Thursday boots. They have long been a personal favorite and a favorite of a lot of other people. Thursday Boot Company has been around for about eight years and it's based in New York City. The boot we're looking at today is the Captain and this leather is called Jasper and it sells for $199. The Jasper Captain uh, comes with a full grain hand finished leather and it gives it sort of a unique aged appearance. Although this leather does not have um, really any pull up. And I would say that it's probably the thinnest leather of the three boots in today's comparison. It is fully leather lined and it has two speed hooks on either side of the tongue. And that makes them easy to get on and off. Now like the Warfield and Grand, the captains come with an EVA insole and it makes these boots exceptionally comfortable when they come right out of the box. They also come with a cork midsole that's gonna to conform to your foot over time. The soles on the Captain are rubber studded and they give traction that lands somewhere between the Hollis and the Woodlands. And they are Goodyear welt constructed, which makes them actually uh, the most water resistant or the most resistant from water getting on the inside of them of the three, but also makes them easy to resole. These boots get their leather from Mexico and they're also made in Mexico as well. They really are a great boot that you can have around for a long time. Now of the three boots, Thursday came in a very close second to Warfield and Grand for out of the box comfort. They don't require much break in and the soft insole is really easy on the feet. Now these run about a half size large. So I got mine in a nine and a half and they feel just right. The captains seem to sit right between the Warfield and Grands and the Helms when it comes to style wise. They're a little more rugged than the Warfield and Grands and a little more refined than the Helms. They sit in a great middle ground and would also serve as an easy choice for an all arounder. The Thursday Captain is an excellent choice for anyone that's just sort of looking for a great daily driver that's versatile and comfortable and recraftable. There's a reason why one of the most reviewed boots on YouTube is the Thursday Captain. Hey, that's all I've got for this Capto boot comparison. I wanna thank Warfield and Grand for sending me all of these boots today to compare. It actually really says a lot about a company when they're willing to send you not only their boots, but their competitors' boots to compare them to. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they have to offer in the future, and I can recommend them. If you have experience with any of these boot brands and want to share it, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.